In 2010, Kim Chocolate started to look for an organic cocoa bean with a story. So this travel brought me to the Kiela and Rungwe districts in Tanzania and there I found the story. When you drive around in this area, you see so much misery and you start to realize that good education is your only way out of poverty. So that's why Kim Chocolates started its Cocoa for Schools program. We want to return money we earn with their cocoa beans back to the society over here. I visited one of the primary schools and it was a shock to me. I saw on average 100 children in the classroom. The teachers told me that they had on average one book for 30 students. And you can see right away that this is an unsustainable way of education. So on the spot I decided to donate money so that they could buy the first 2,000 books and I promised I would try to do more for them. So one morning I got a phone call from Felix Mtawa. He is the operations manager of Biolens. And he said, listen Fons, we have another 134 villages just like Angleka. Is there any chance you could do something for them as well? I answered him, listen Felix, we are a relatively small company with limited financial possibilities. But okay, uh, I can't say no to your question. So I get back to Fons, ask him, Fons, can you do something for this community? Then Fons simply said, why not? I will do. But I will need your support. So let's go hand in hand. That was the story started from there. There is a, a huge opportunity for every young Tanzanian who has reached the age of going to school to go to school. But our problem is infrastructure. We have, okay, we have a lot of schools, but most of these schools need rehabilitation. And this is exactly what Kim's Chocolate is doing in Tanzania, in Kiela, to rehabilitate infrastructure in our, in our primary school. So it's a very important program. Kabla, kabla ya madarasa mapya kujengwa hali ilivyokuwa katika shule ya msingi Kabula watoto to, walikuwa wanasomea nje chini ya miti kipindi cha mvua tulikuwa tunakosa mahali pa kuwahifadhi kwa sababu tulikuwa hatuna majengo ya kutosha hivyo jumba viwili vya madarasa vilivyopo tulikuwa tuna, tunawachukua watoto nje mvua zikuwa zinanyesha tunawajaza ndani na masomo yalikuwa yanasimama yalikuwa yaendelee at the end of 2014 we had a meeting with the uh, district commissioner from uh, Kiela. She is the highest authority in the area. And she gave us a lot of information about the situation in the schools. So we found out that they had only 550 classrooms for 55,000 children. They had in the villages, according to their files, some 80 classrooms but not completed. Uh, first time I met Mr. Fons, uh, I did not think that he can do all things what, uh, that he is doing now. Uh, I thought he is just uh, trying to collect cocoa as the other companies do, but I come to know that uh, he is different, that he come to help us. Yeah. So, one of the first pillars of our project is renovating the uh, 500 plus classrooms and teacher offices they have today. So, a couple of months later, I came back with a proposal and I told them, I believe we can do this in 10 to 12 years time, but we need to have three conditions fulfilled. First of all, we need to have much more money than today. Since 2010, after my first visit, 
Kim's Chocolates had decided to join a uh, corporate responsibility program. And it means that on every metric ton of cocoa beans we are buying, we put a levy. And that levy goes into a fund which we will use for community development. What we see here, basically behind us, is the reception of cocoa. Cocoa comes from the field, basically it comes from our farmers. The, the way it works is that uh, cocoa is brought in by our trucks, it gets inside the warehouse, cocoa gets assessed in terms of moisture, it, it gets cleaned and after that is ready to be exported into jute bags. This Jude bags get into trucks and the trucks go to Dar es Salaam for exportation to Barry Calibre factories. Our link for Coco for School is Coco. Uh, we buy Coco from um, unorganized farmers in Kiela and sell it to Kim's Chocolates. This is certified Coco. And the premium element of this certification is being reinvested into the project. The Cocoa for School project is basically divided in two parts. We have a community development part, which is Cocoa for Schools. And on the other side, we have what we call a productivity package, where we teach farmers on best available practices to grow cocoa, uh, where we distribute cocoa seedlings to the farmers and where we give access to pruning tools. Mimi ni mkulima kwa zao la kilimo cha mpunga, mahindi, pia maharage afu na na kakao. Ndio kilimo ninachotegemea ninachopatia kipato changu. Katika kilimo ninacholima mimi kwa kweli na upungufu wa pembejeo pembejeo ni yani ni gharama sana ndio maana tunashindwa kulima kufikia haki yetu plantation project sponsored by the Kim's chocolates and berry caliber together they are helping the tanzanian farmers they are assisting the farmers to grow more crop by way of that they are giving cocoa saplings at a very small price to be taken care of by the farmers. And this project has been in Tanzania for the last three years. And we have almost supplied 250,000 plants at free of, almost free of cost to the farmers. The second thing was that we needed to be able to buy our raw materials or our building materials at a much cheaper price. So we went into negotiations with the cement factory, the roof sheet factory. We found a sustainable sawmill so that the wood that we are using for our buildings is coming uh, from sustainable forestry and not from cutting trees in rainforests. And on top of that, we had also a paint manufacturing company joining in. So that allowed us to buy our construction materials at a much lower price. Their traditional way of making bricks requires the cutting of a lot of trees for the brick ovens. Therefore, for our new buildings, we are introducing a new brick-making technology where a mixture of the local soil and cement is compacted to bricks. To me, this is a very good technology because you, you are saving uh, cement, you are saving water, you, you get nice bricks, very strong, and they, don't, they, they, they mature in a short time, and the buildings look very nice after the build. The main advantage of this brick making is that it reduces the effects. First of all, the bricks themselves, they don't need 
firewood to, to make them so it reduces the effect of deforestation and they have good strength, they have good quality because it's a mix of soil and cement. So in the end you get good quality which is durable for a long time. Now the third important cost was labor. So I visited in person all the 135 villages and we had village meetings under the trees and we discussed the situation in their uh, schools and we asked them for their cooperation as well and we all agreed that they would uh, take care of the labor cost or they would do the labor themselves with volunteers or they would pay for the labor cost for people they would hire in. So then we had to organize ourselves a little bit and we had first of all to find a uh, engineer. So we found Michael and since two years now he is working for us and he is supervising all the projects in the different villages. Uh, in our building projects uh, we have so many challenges. Uh, one of the challenges is uh, as Kim's chocolate is the one who is sponsoring this project. Uh, he's just paying for material and, uh, and, uh, and the supervision. So I'm the one who's supervising this project. And the responsibility of the community is just to pay for labor. So the, the, the only challenge uh, which uh, dropped down the, uh, the speed is uh, the issue of uh, uh, the local community. They are making the contribution slowly. So now we are ready. That is mid-2015 and we are now bringing out our story to all the villages and we selected the first 40, 50 projects where we would start in 2016. In this region, the families are living on a few cash crops. The villages are very poor, there is no uh, drinkable water, there is no electricity and uh, the houses, uh, hygienic circumstances are very, very low. We are really working here amongst the poorest of the world. Uh, Asumuise Kiamba, nilizaliwa mwaka elfu moja mia tisa arubena nne. Mke wangu anaito Trezia Masangula, alizaliwa mwaka elfu moja mia tisa stina mbi. Watu wawili tuna watoto wetu sita, hapa chini tumezika watoto watano. Kuna mke wangu wapili ambaye nilioa, yuli na watoto na sita. Wa mdogo wangu alikufariki watoto, amewacha watoto wadogo, amewacha watoto wangapi, wawili, kwa hiyo nina watoto kuminani jumla. Wengine wako shuleni. Walio baki mashuleni, sasa hivi ni watoto wanne. Ada za wote hao zinatokana na mimi. Na jitahidi kutokana kwa chochote kile ninacholima. Nikipata tumuhogo, nikipata kapunga, nikipata kokoa. Kiuza basi naweka kule, kidogo kidogo hivyo hivyo. Watoto nilio waoza, wameolewa, wana, wana miji yao huko huko. Wanakula chakula chao huko huko. Hakuna wanachofanya kuangu mimi. Hakuna hata moja na nitumia au pesa au nitumia chakula. Hakuna hata moja. Kwa hiyo najitegemea mimi mwenyewe na mke wangu. Basi, kuatunza watoto waliopu. Kazi tunazofanya. Kwa sasa hivi, Mimi sina kambaku, mke wangu naye anatumia jembe la mkono, 
tunapata kipato kidogo sana kwa mpunga hata kwa kwa mahindi tunapata kipato kidogo sana na fadhali kipato kwenye kokoa tunapata fadhali ipo ndicho kinatulinda kokoa kama nime ya kipungwa tu kwenye kokoa basi nakula mara moja kwa siku mpaka chakula kingine kitakapokuja ndipo naanza kula kama kawaida Most of the people are living in villages without electricity. Uh, they have to uh, lighten their houses with kerosene. And kerosene is something which is very uh, unhealthy. There are a lot of eye diseases, lung diseases caused by uh, the vapors of kerosene in those small little huts where they're living in. Secondly, it's also very dangerous and you see a lot of people with awful burning wounds and those people are spending one third of their microscopic income to pay for kerosene. I call it a Faida Mawdeni. 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 Uh, we are missing also a lot of school books. So we have decided to set up a little business in which we can make money and with the profit of that we are going to buy the school books. So we decided to bring in a high quality solar panel uh, system it has an 8 watt solar panel, it comes with four 2 watt LED lights and also a cable with which they can charge their mobile phone. Many families will not have immediately the money to put it forward. We will set up a little microfinancing system so that everybody will be able to afford to buy these solar panels. And they will pay off the loan with the money they did not spend to buy kerosene in the weeks after they got the solar panel installed. Eh na shukuru kwa kunifungia sola. Usiku wa leo nimepata mwanga ambao sijawahi upata tangu kuzaliwa. Kwa sababu sehemu zote za hapa zilikuwa zimejaa mwanga kabisa. Hata watoto wamesoma vizuri sana usiku. Mpaka mpaka sole imeanza kufifia ndio wakaacha vitabu kwanza kwanza kulala nashukuru sana kwa kazi mlionitendea asante Mungu awabariki we believe that we can sell at least 60000 of those systems in the districts we are active and that will give us enough money to buy all the 400000 school books Building schools, buying school books is not enough. We have to make sure that kids go to school and that teachers also do their work properly. I'm driving every day through the villages and too many times I see children walking alongside the road and not being at school. So we decided to set up with the district a program to sensibilize the parents and also the teachers that kids and teachers will also be there every day. However, there is still a lot more to do. Uh, when we are a little bit farther advanced with our construction programs uh, for the classrooms, we want also to, to address the issue of drinkable water. And our plan is to drill in all the villages, in all the school communities, a water well. We will put a pump system on top of that, powered by solar panels and we will build a water tower so we can pump up the water to a certain height. Then we like to build proper toilets with flushing water, with water where they can clean themselves after having used the toilet and when they get out they can wash their hands. 
it will drastically improve uh, the hygiene of the children and will without any doubt save many lives. Lakini pia changamoto nyingine ni maji. Hapa maji tunategemea tuna visima tu vile ambavyo tunavitegemea. Na hiyo visima maana yake maji kifika kipindi cha kiangazi anafanyaje? Yanakauka. Kumbe tungekuwa na ma, ma, ma sim tank ya kutosha, tungekuwa na haya mabomba na nini, tungeweza kuwa na maji ya kutosha. After we have completed the classrooms, the bathrooms, the toilets, we will start building teacher houses and we believe we will need to build at least some 1200 of those. Actually in our country, like many other countries, teaching profession is not a highly paying profession. So teaching is, uh, what we're saying is the vocation, uh, people should have uh, self-drive uh, to become teachers. After that, as a government, we motivate them by giving in-service training, by offering uh, houses where it's possible, but making sure that we are paying them their dues, like allowances, maybe uh, leave allowances and things like that. But speaking naturally, teaching is a profession that uh, not attracting many people. No, no, no. Uh, for good housing, actually, there is a shortage of, of houses for teachers. Unfortunately, you, that's why you find in some schools, especially those which are interiors, teachers don't stay there at school. We need more teachers because for the previous two, three years, more teachers have retired. In 2015, the district had about 1,300 teachers. Currently, we have about 1,025 teachers only. If you are building nice schools, nice classrooms, teachers' houses, that, that will attract more teachers to come to the job. All these plans do cost a lot of money. A major part of the contributions today are coming from Kim's Chocolates. They are coming from the levy we put on every ton of uh, cocoa beans bought on our behalf. So basically all of our customers are participating indirectly to this project. But we have also companies who want to do the extra mile. They are setting projects up using the cocoa beans from this area or just around other products of us and they are adding an extra margin which they donate to the funding. Yeah, uh, I'm really looking for the you know type of the organization who is really supporting uh, you know children. Then uh, I decided uh, to join uh, this project. I have a, like a, two trips to Tanzania. I have a confidence uh, what Fonts is doing. I felt like a, you know big appreciation to the people here, not like uh, I'm giving money. No, uh, uh, how I felt is uh, uh, I attain the opportunity to join this project and uh, to work with people here. Uh, this is, you know, uh, fantastic. Now, I would like to share my experience, uh, what I felt here to the people around me uh, in Japan, in Australia, or in the world, as much as possible. Yeah, thank you.
So for all those new sponsors, we can guarantee you that 100% of your funding will be used in the projects. We believe that education is the only way out of poverty. So please help us to educate, enrich and empower. On behalf of 65,000 children in the primary schools here, Asante Nisana. Tu mogere, tu mogere. 